Back now, we should tell you the next part of the programme does include some pretty grim details. We're talking about this woman, Eleanor Williams, and what she did. She is currently serving eight and a half years in jail for perverting the course of justice after she lied about being raped, beaten and trafficked abroad. But we're speaking to a man behind that story, Mohammed Ramzan, a father of four and a businessman from Barrow. In 2019, he was arrested and accused of being the head of a grooming gang. Now, all those claims have been proven to be false. I sat down with Mohammed and we started by talking about the day that changed his life forever. And just a warning again that some of what he talks about is pretty harrowing. It's harrowing. It's, it, it was scary. Absolutely scary. It, it's, it, and it just didn't make sense. And you're thinking... It, at the end of the time, and the questioning, you know, and the searches that took place, and they held me for 36 hours, searched my house twice. And what happened to you after that? Because, I, you know, it, it's impossible for anybody who's not been through that to imagine, but I, there's fingers being pointed at you, and, yeah. and your life does change overnight. It, yeah, it did, it, it drastically. It, drastically. You, you fe you, you're fearing for your safety, you're fearing for your children's safety, and... The way it was, I, I just I just felt like the police wasn't weren't doing enough. When you got to know that it was Eleanor Williams or Ellie Williams who had accused you of this, what what, what were your thoughts then? Had you known her at all? Was I, she? I, I know the family. The crazy thing is, I know the mother, I know the stepdad, I know her her auntie and her husband were our best friends. Well, her partner, ex partner now, Jonathan, is still my best friend. Uh, and and you and you the grandma. And you're obviously in this desperate state. Were you reaching out to the, to the family? Because obviously you knew... I, I, on the day I would come out and my bail conditions were not to contact or anybody, yeah. uh, I rang the grandma. I rang Anne Burns. What did she say? Uh, well, I rang, I, I rang her up, said, hi, Anne, it's, it's me. And we'd start, she goes, I said, I've just come out, uh, I've just been arrested and I've just been released. And she was like, oh, Rami, what have you done? I said, nothing. I said, what this? And she goes, OK, what's happened? I said, uh, it's your granddaughter. Uh, she goes, OK. She, oh, she turned around and she went, Mohammed, Rami, became Mohammed. At that point, I could understand. Uh, it's a formal conversation now. It's not... Uh, it's not... Not friendly. Not friendly now. And, oh, she said to me, she goes, which one? I went, Ellie. She goes, I'm at wit's end with my granddaughters. And I went... Uh, you know, she's accused me of some really hideous things. She goes, have you been bailed? I went, yes. She goes, have you got any conditions? I went, yes. And she goes, well, let them do the job, Mohammed, and I th don't think me and you should be having this conversation then, should we? I went, true, really? No, we shouldn't. And that was it, put the phone down. How bad did it get for you and how low did you get? <sighs> The one of the worst experience of my life, this is. It's, it's been absolute hell. The actual social media persecution that took place, the way the social media was used in this case, and I was targeted via social media and hundreds and hundreds and thousands of people following it, uh, you know, hundreds of death threats, and. Properties smashed. Uh, your family as well. How yeah, you your family. It, 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 I found my son. Sliced his arms. Uh, one, one, one of the days. It, it was half past one at night. I've gone to use the loo. His room's next to. There's lights on, and I walked in, and you see his son. And because uh, we were all keeping each other strong, but we weren't exposing anything how it was affecting, and I. Because if you know the history of this, if you've seen that on my social media and everything, I took it upon myself. I went out there. I went out there guns blazing. What do you think of her now? Now she's been convicted. Now she's going to serve time for what she did to you and to others. I, I, I feel relieved with that. I'm happy about that. But my concern is the damage she's actually done for real victims. The, you know, how far this is... The, the rape cases are already so difficult to prove. Mm. Uh, you know, and what has she actually done to sisterhood? Well, the, 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 the real victims. And the damage that she's done to us as, and the rest of them. And, and it's the ripple effect, the families. What would you say to her now if you had the opportunity? Well, I would love to know why. You know, and tell us the truth. Why? Well, how can you actually just go and do that? And 
feel, and she feels so, even in the court when I've seen her, even with the verdict, with the sentencing, there's no remorse. I, I denied my family in the sense of not knowing what all the difficulties they were going through. My, you know, my wife's a very strong, independent person, and she was going with her friends, going, and they were now. It's coming to me that she'd go and t offload there, not with me. Mm. And with my sons, how they were affected, I didn't really sit with them or talk about it. It was just, I, I, I'm taking them on. We're not running away. And there was a point of where everybody, my sons, wanted to move out, and I was like, no, we're not. Uh, and, and my, dad, my son, when he turned around, he goes, you know, Dad, you're known as a pedo, everyone, you know, you're everywhere on social media, my friends, this, that, this is horrible town, why have you moved us here? And then he felt the guilt of that, and he was leaving and going, and I, that, I, and I, that was my first attempt of suicide. It was, I smashed a bottle of my head, and I, and I tried to use the empty bottle to slice my neck in front of my children, my wife, and Jonathan, my friend, and if he didn't grab my hands, it would have been a different story, possibly, about my not being here. Do you think there should be anonymity across the board then in cases uh, like this? Yes, I think there should be. There should because how how do you protect it? How do you protect that somebody that's innocent? And you know, it's, and there'll always be a minority still. There's no smoke without fire. Final question, Chimo. What's it like now for you in Barrow? You know, uh, to be there to. I imagine be face to face with some people who accused you of some of these things and said things to you and you know chased you, whether that was in person or in on social Probably media. Did, yeah. How do you respond to them now? Have some people come up and apologised? A lot of apologies. There's been a lot of apologies and there's been a lot of people coming forward and basically, you know, messages of opposite side of where I hit was getting de death threats. Now I'm getting messages of love. You know, people uh, saying they are inspired by me. People saying, you know, you're, you're a lovely man. You're, you're brilliant. You know, it's ho horrible what you've had to go through. And support, and the support, and it's outweighed mm. the bad. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you. And I hope this and some of the other interviews that you have done will help you. Thank you. Take care of yourself and look after your family as well. It's been lovely to talk to you. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thanks, Mike. Thank you.